anyways, just do the high end. So uh, I came back and I had a performance that was coming up and I didn't have any stories to tell. So I asked my audience, our audience as artists, to write in stories that I could then read during my performance. And I was lucky enough to receive, I was literally inundated with hundreds of stories. These stories were almost all garbage. They were crap. They were about crap. Just a bunch of people talking about their small lives and all the small things that happened to them. So I picked out the few that were good, and I'm going to read them for you today. Uh, I wish I could talk about the tragedy, because it was very interesting but they are still alive. Right, tragedy by definition is interesting. Here's the first. And this first letter is entitled Two Box with Man. Michelle is sick today. I'm feeling a little unwell myself, coughing and just general lethargy. I woke up at 7.15 a.m. and I lay there staring at the sunlight that was coming in through the slats of the blinds and knew that I was up for the day. So I kissed Michelle. I swung out of bed and I put on my robe. I left the bedroom, pulling the door closed behind me, leaving a little room for the cats to get in and out, and I went to the kitchen to make a pot of coffee. And around 8.30, I heard Michelle in the bedroom call off of work for the day. I sat on the couch and drank coffee, listened to the radio and smoked cigarettes, and coughed for a few hours. I read a bit and then took a shower. Michelle had gotten up while I was showering and she was sitting on a couch wearing her glasses and watching a soap opera when I came out. I gave her a kiss and I asked her if there was anything that she needed. She said she was a little hungry. So I told her to let me know when she decided what she wanted. Then I went to the kitchen to wash the dishes. I knew it would make her feel better if I washed the dishes, cleaned up the apartment a bit. When I was done with that, I went back into the living room and I sat down next to her. We sat there for a bit with me reading and her watching the television. She got up. She went to the kitchen. She came back again with a large can of off-brand beef stew that her grandmother had sent home with us. Her grandmother was always getting bags of groceries from the local church because she was elderly. But she never ate any of it. She gave it to us whenever we visited. She kind of said something about us. Do you think this is any good, she asked. I shook it. And I looked at it for any dents. Sure, it looks fine, I said. Now, I know it's not damaged. It's just that this is what they give to poor people. We're poor, I said. She turned her head away from me, and I felt a stab of pain for her as I said it. I was perfectly comfortable in the knowledge that we were poor, but Michelle was not. There's nothing wrong with being poor, I said trying to ease her mind a bit. There's a nobility to being poor. See, when trouble comes, it'll be us smashing windows and burning buildings, stomping and screaming. The rich could never do that. The rich believe in the things being smashed. Us, we're not tied to anything. See, that makes us free. She leaned over and smiled and kissed me and said that she loved me. She went to the kitchen and heated up the beef stew and brought it back out with salt and pepper shakers it turned out to be a pretty good stew. 